Okay, good morning everyone. Welcome to the Talestas and Art and Creativity Conversation Series. So for this, uh, it's a week-long um, series of different talks and different uh, fora. And for today, we have uh, Professor Benvenido Tapang Jr. who will be talking on, the cult on culture counts, mapping the creative industry. So to uh, formally open, our Talistasan, maybe please call on Professor Rachel Pitlongay, the department chair of the Department of Language, Literature, and the Art. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for coming. So in behalf of the College of Arts and Communication and um, our dean, Professor Jimmy Fong, who extends his apologies for not being able to attend today due to a um, minor accident, um, we would like to thank all of you for coming, and um, we would just like to reiterate uh, as we go through this week-long um, lecture series how the different fields, uh, different fields where we come from, um, for now economics, for example, contributes to the development of Baguio as creative city, and um, we hope that. Um, for today, we would learn how uh, whichever field we are in, we could uh, conceptualize and create ideas on how we could further this vision that we have for the development of Baguio City and also um, for ourselves as members of this city. So thank you so much once again, and we hope that um, this would serve as a very uh, a great learning experience for all of us. Thank you, Professor Pitlongay. So to give a uh, very brief introduction of our esteemed speaker, talaga naman, uh, um, th of those of you who do not know, uh, as we fondly call him Lolo Ben, Professor Benvenido Tapang Jr. is a profes prof professorial lecturer of economics at the IM of UP Baguio. He was also the former director of the Cordillera Study Center, where he edited Cordillera in June, essay celebrating June Prilbret that won the National Book Award for Anthology in 2008 from the National Book Development Board and the Manila Critics Circle. He was also a visiting professor at the School of Economics at the University of Asia and the Pacific. So yung talk ni Sir Ben ngayon is about culture counts, thus cultural statistics. What is the relevance of discussing all of these things? So in his abstract, the UNESCO Institute for Statistics points out that cultural statistics are a means of formalizing while is still currently viewed as an informal sector in order that the contribution of the creative arts to the econ economy and society is finally acknowledged. When cultural statistics are collected and analyzed, a much more systematic approach can be put in place to allow our creative industries to flourish and to for culture to take center stage in the construction of economic and social policy. In addition, quantitative data also allows us to appreciate the multiplier effects generated by the economy of culture and its positive impact on employment. So without further ado, may we please uh, call on Professor Benvenido Tapang Jr. Hello po, and good morning. Uh, having taught here for the last 40 years, I know that two thirds of my prospective listeners this morning uh, are not here on their own free will. And so I frame your question for you uh, for the day. Uh, yeah. uh, <coughs> Is there something meaningful to me in the subjects this weird stranger is going to talk about, even if I'm not in economics? I surely hope so, especially if you teach or is doing your major at the College of Arts and Communication. Now, I don't know, I don't know how long I'm supposed to do this, so I'll go on until time uh, stops me or I have put all of you to sleep or whatever comes first. Uh, in the beginning, whenever that was, there were bit bitterly contested debates about whether or not art should be considered a commodity. Art and commerce being regarded as blatantly opposite poles. The point 
is there is a market for art, and there it is a commodity. 1,500 years before the birth of Christ, Egyptian art dealers were exporting images of the divine to the island of Crete and selling them to the faithful. Ever since people made art, there always has been a market for it. In any case, and regardless of your position, there already is a full chapter on culture in the current Philippine Development Plan. Uh, Philippine Development Plan 2017-2022. Chapter 7, Promoting Philippine Culture and Values from the National Economic and Development Authority. So we need, therefore, to deal with that. The plan states that Filipino creativity needs to be, first, geared toward a culture-based industry and creative economy. Second, foster an entrepreneurial spirit that values, among others, intellectual property. And third, one that treasures the arts, sciences, technology, and innovation. So, let me go, let me get to the ABCs of these. My presentation is limited to what I have learned from my short and accidental encounter with this most recent appeal to economic development. I am painting a broad canvas depicting the notions of creative economy, creative industries, and cultural statistics. Cultural mapping, despite what your invite says was Paulo's lecture last Saturday. Uh, his, the title of his uh, lecture last time was A Tale of Two Cities, and it already touched on uh, cultural mapping. His two cities being Makati and Baguio, which are currently doing the respective mapping exercises. He includes a third city, Bandung, as a model for doing the mapping exercise. Uh, John Hawkins in www.britishcouncil.org refers to the creative economy as the transactions of creative products that have an economic good or service and that results from creativity and has economic value. The economy, uh, for those who are in economics and for those who are being introduced to economics, the economy is, of course, made up of industries, where an industry, in its turn, consists of firms and is classified as where that industry belongs, to agriculture, to industry, or service. But what is a creative industry? Uh, the United Kingdom's Department of Culture, Media, and Sports that published its mapping document 1998 listed 13 areas of activity, the creative industries, uh, which had in common the fact that they have, quote, their origins in individual creativity, skill, and talent, and have a potential for wealth and job creation through this generation of intellectual property. The United Nations Conference on Trade and Development to the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, the UNCTAD, is attributed the introduction to the world's national economies and to the economic development agenda, the notion of the creative economy. It is because of the UNCTAD, the creative economy has the ability first to create code to create and circulate intellectual capital, has the potential to generate income, jobs, and export earnings, while at the same time promoting social inclusion, cultural diversity, and human development, and cult. It examines the interface among creativity, culture, economics, and technology in our present milieu. The document, State of the Philippine Creative Industries, 
uh, lists the Philippine creative industries to consist of, first, heritage and the arts, consisting of music, dance, theater, visual arts and photography, cultural sites, and traditional goods and crafts. Uh, the second one, the second, uh, the second one is architecture and design, including interior design, industrial design, packaging, fashion, jewelry, furniture, household goods. Uh, the third set consists of the audiovisual uh, industries, uh, for instance, or that is film, TV, and radio. The fourth is printing, publishing, and the print media made up of newspapers, books and magazines, dissertations, and articles. Uh, the fifth set consists of, the create, of creative services such as animation, gaming, advertising, and uh, the last one is science and technology, including research and development. So these make up our creative economy. You know, from the foregoing list of our creative industries, take note of the combination of the traditional and the contemporary. New Begin in www.britishcouncil.org argues that when the ancient forms such as crafts, festivals, celebrations, dance, music, literature, and performances fuse with the modern, such as advertising, design, fashion, and, and the technology-based film and recorded sound media, and uploaded to the digital platforms, newer and bigger audiences are reached. Thus, in addition to tourism and what collectors look for, the output of traditional creative work finds new sources of revenue. Not to mention that the always expanding digital technology creates many new industries and skills. Now, but the market value of the output of these industries are not yet recognized in the current templates that measure economic activity, such as the gross domestic product accounts. They are still incorporated as contributions of the sectors counted according to current standard industry classification. In this DTI document, <coughs> in this DTI document, oh, the state of the Philippine creative industries is found some of the preliminary attempts at estimating the contribution of the creative fields and sectors to gross domestic product in selected regions and countries, including ours. Now, the worldwide estimate of the contribution of the creative industries is about 8% of the global output. Thank you. In the Philippines, the value contribution of the creative industries was 5.4% in 2009, up by a tiny 1.9 percentage points in 10 years. This compares with Thailand's 12% contribution in 2008. China's creative sector provided only 2.6% contribution to the value of its GDP account, but its GDP account is a massive, massive amount. So the 2.6% translated to the biggest export revenue share in 2008 among all nations in East Asia. In the ASEAN, Thailand with Singapore captures the biggest share of the 17.4 uh, billion US dollars export revenue from the region's creative industry sector. 
Now, and while, and while our creative industries did provide 12.4% of total Philippine export value in 2008, and only 4.6% of our total imports, we still are a net importer of the output of foreign creative industries. What this means is that the 4% share of our spending on imports of products of the creative based, creative industry based abroad was higher than the 12% contribution to revenue of Philippine exports. Our most heavily traded creative industry products are the press and literature, motion picture, and video. <coughs> I, okay. Uh, our major markets are. So, our major markets, uh, the major markets of the Philippine creative industries would be this uh, printing, publishing, motion picture, and music. The market is largely domestic. Uh, for animation and game development, our major markets are the US, Europe, and Japan. And for our furniture exports, the major markets are uh, US and Europe. Now, it goes without saying that the objective of capturing all these pieces of information is to up our share in the market for globally traded creative products and services. It is a market that, after all, registered a total value of 592 billion US dollars in 2010 and that grew at an annual rate of 14.4% uh, for 2002. So now, how are we supposed to do it? Only by enhancing our ability to compete. Hence, as I mentioned earlier, there is a full chapter on culture, uh, a full chapter on culture uh, in the Philippine Development Plan, promoting the Philippine culture and values, chapter seven of the 26, 2016 to 20, 2017 to 22 uh, NEDA Development Plan. Now it's not an easy task actually to promote culture and values as stated in this development plan. Now, uh, the problems here are nested like Russian dolls. For instance, uh, the targets of five sets of output indicators are still to, to be discussed. Now, the targets cannot be set because there is no up-to-date baseline to base those targets on. And third, that baseline depends on data that still need to be collected. And now, prior to data collection, those indicators and targets need to be elaborated on in more concrete terms so that those data translate themselves the more useful statistical levels of measurement. Now from, uh, I'm quoting all those documents that we are trying to, or whose content all of us are trying to cope with. Now, uh, there is a UNESCO, uh, there's a UNESCO Institute for Statistics, and from, from this document, it says, Cultural statistics, and I think um, our MC has read my, uh, ano, my abstract. Cultural statistics are a means of formalizing what still is currently viewed as an informal sector. Now why? In order that the contribution of the creative arts to the economy and society is finally acknowledged. The law that constituted the National Commission on Culture and the Arts, in fact, mandates that it collect statistical and other data that reflect 
the state of the country's cultural conditions to serve as the basis for formulating cultural policy. Now, following the mandate, the NCCA issued this uh, document, Bilang Pilipinas, a primer on Philippine cultural statistics. Reported are the results of its efforts at collecting and organizing cultural data based on the Philippine cultural statistics framework. Now, I confess, it is probably bad of me to expect more information from a primer. But what there are so far are lists of museums, of the, national, uh, of the National Museum of the Philippines and the National Historical Commission, declared historic sites and structures, world heritage sites, performances and celebrations, but only those organized by or held at the Cultural Center of the Philippines, festivals, fairs, and feasts, and information on books and the press but only those in the National Library of the Philippines. Now, still absent are the financial and economic data, except for some labor force and establishment statistics, or what we call, or what are, uh, or what we call, uh, statistical data on the ordinal and ratio level. Well, the current status of information from the primer makes it difficult to appreciate the why of cultural statistics, why, why, we need to, why we need to collect all of them. So now, <coughs> when cultural statistics are collected and analyzed, a much more systematic approach can be put in place to allow our creative industries to flourish and culture to take center stage in the construction of economic and social policy. The UNESCO framework also cautions that the current data collection methods lose significant things. For instance, the contribution to employment and the value of the output in developing countries, since our cultural work is often a secondary occupation. Uh, I, the faculty of the College of Arts and Communications will agree completely with this, okay? Uh, we need a day job, okay? We need a day job to, 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 to finance uh, our, uh, what we actually like to do, okay? Uh, because our cultural work is often a secondary occupation, at matatawag na ba natin yun na cottage industry level yung ginagawa natin ni hindi yata eh. So, at cottage industry level, such as the craft production of farming household, especially the women's. And more locally, the creative output of the CAC faculty or din Toto Colongon's original music. So, uh, indulgence, indulgence namin yun in addition to everything that we are expected to do. And the Philippine Annual Business Survey does not even collect data for businesses of under 10 employees, such that firms are being classified as those of the informal economy. So how now? So again, there is a document from a focus group discussion organized by the NCCA and, uh, and the British Council in May of 2017, led by Dr. Tom Fleming, uh, the, create, the, co the, creative, the Philippine Creative Economy Toward a Baseline and Program. So, and, bakit uh, nahuhuli itong aking All right, and this FGD, this FGD, which was uh, an interagency consultation, was intended to this first develop 
a clear and consistent approach to creative industries mapping via a set of baseline activities. The second one is to streamline and improve this approach. And third, to find practical ways of moving forward. The sessions, in fact, arrived at some practical next steps, including a timetable of activities for the next three years. Uh, year one is to develop the detailed framework and methodology. Uh, year two, to roll out a set of pilots, which are local studies, <coughs> to a series of regional, city and regional mapping exercises, not necessarily work nationwide, is supposed to serve as the building blocks toward a national baseline. And as I noted earlier, Paolo's lecture last Saturday already touched on Makati and Baguio that are currently doing the respective mapping exercise. Our own Professor de Guzman, who is there, uh, is mapping a sample of artists and artisans in what we are now in what are now referred to as Baguio's creative industries. He's working in partnership with the Asian Institute of Management on their pro project called uh, on their project called. The Creative City of the Philippines, Citywide Mapping and Opportunities for Growth. And uh, I, have, I have looked at his uh, progress tracker of what he has been doing. He comes to, he comes from, uh, he comes to the office, pagod na pagod, at pawis na pawis, at nanggaling daw sa sabaking, at sa, at sa, ano yun, sa city, ka, sa city, sa city ka, all of those places uh, before he teaches his class doing this project. And on year three, to focus on priority sections for a national baseline study. Now, let me end this talk by mentioning something I got myself into. I forgot the saying that curiosity kills a cat. So being curious as to what the fuss on the creative economy was all about, ewan ko kung ano yung, kung bakit nasira ulo namin ni Sir Chip dyan. I, we taught, we team taught a course, MM296, called New Enterprise Planning. And now we now have the four unpublished final reports from four groups into which we divided the class. Uh, ito yung, ito yung, ito yung uh, reports nila, apat na groups, okay? Uh, the Cordillera, Cordillera Creative Network Team, okay? Connecting creativity to its very nature was the title they chose for their investigation of the three Baguio industries, weaving, silver craft, and wood carving. They constituted the creative industries that provided the justification for Baguio's honor as a UNESCO creative city. Now we have a second group that called them, that themselves the Daluyan, ay, ano yun, Daluyon Business Planning Team. And their report, uh, and their report is, their feasibil is a feasibility for instituting or reinstituting what they call the Baguio Cultural festivals. The team looked at the different Baguio dance companies and dance schools, community theater groups, and I was very surprised at what they proposed to include mixed martial arts club. After their investigation, the team proposed periodic Baguio cultural festivals to be handled by an events management organization. The third group called themselves Sayote Jam, okay? And uh, the title of their report was Cordillera Unplugged Toward a Platform for the Music Industry. The study proposes to support and accelerate the growth of the Baguio community of musicians through the creation of such a digital platform and other activities. And the last group, uh, came from government 
uh, two government agencies, uh, the, the La Union Provincial Government and somebody from NEDA Region 1. Now, and the title of the report was La Union Creative Hub Business Plan. Now, the work studies the feasibility of rehabilitating the old Mabanag Justice Hall in San Fernando City toward becoming a creative hub offering a mix of agro-tourism services including a pasalubong display and sales center, a cafe for some Iloco gastronomy experience, a venue for assistance to creative startups, and as a co-working and exhibition space for local performers and artists. The hub is now operational. So hindi lang sila, hindi lang sila nananaginip, okay? So, uh, ginawa na nila ang uh, simula ng kanilang, uh, hindi lang ito panaginip, ito na to, in support uh, of the provincial government. Now, what they were telling me when they were reporting was that for the next, uh, for, the, for the first three years of operation, they expect assistance from the provincial government, but after three years, they expect and hope that, the, that this creative hub becomes already self-sufficient self uh, and uh, in, in terms of revenue, in terms of revenue and reinvestment. So I wish them well, and I hope our city uh, wakes up to the fact na kahit tayo yung creative city na declare ng UNESCO, merong mga, merong mga uh, uh, local initiatives na nandyan na na pwede na nating uh, tingnan, uh, maging benchmark kung ano man ang kailangan nating gawin dito sa city of our affection and the city of our frustration. Uh, that's, thing, that's it, I think. And now for your questions, reactions, and comments, and you don't have to be kind. I can take it. I hope. Salamat po. Thank you very much, Sir Ben. Na, na, na pakiusapan po namin si Professor De Guzman, si Sir Chip, kung uh, <laughs> pwede siya magbigay ng, because our fear before you started with your presentation was that uh, the non-economic students might not be able to understand. But we thank you so much for your, your presentation because we, I, I, I feel that we are able to understand and appreciate it more. So to, to give us a bit more of a um, uh, reaction, to your presentation, informal, informal, informal daw sir chief, maybe and and um if you have uh, questions that you are already starting to formulate that to ask sir Ben, uh, sulat nyo na and then pagkatapos ng uh, short reaction ni ni sir chief, uh, we will go to the question and answer part. May we call on uh, Professor De Guzman, please? Good morning po. Okay. So, oh, salamat Lolo Ben. <laughs> Lolo ko din po siya. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I was tasked either to have a reaction or to laminize it what it is for us for uh, about this creative industry. So, siguro about the technicalities it's with Lolo Ben, but I uh, I think I would summarize Lolo Ben's point into three. So, when we think about uh uh, creative cities or the creative economies, uh, the key word there might be creativity. Okay, so kasi yun yung nakakapagpabago with what we are dealing now. And creativity might be, th uh, pinaka loose term niya sa atin would be thinking outside the box. Okay, and pwede din siya about thinking outside the brain. Okay, so let me laymanize or summarize Lolo Ben's point into three. Okay, three levels of the economy yung susunod. It would be on the, sino ba dito ang econ? May econ ba dito? Ngayon, isa. Estudyante pa kita, no? <laughs> okay. So, okay. So, itatry kong ilay mo na isa. Okay, so, 
uh, according to three levels, which is the macro, meso, micro, four pala, and personal level. So what would be creativity's value or relevance to us? Okay. So first, on macro level, uh, on a macro level, or so yung uh, the broad sense. Tiba nakita natin. We Lolo Ben has has this Philippines, the economy. So he has said that it's a driver of the economy. Okay. So ano bang pinagkaiba ng creativity towards other sources? We have agricultural, manufacturing, and services. So the main advantage of creativity would be creativity does not need an endowment or a factor endowment. The country does not need to have good resources. Hindi tayo kailangan magkaroon ng madaming minahan. Hindi tayo kailangan magkaroon ng madaming isdaan. But creativity is instilled on the individual level. So for example, you have a canvas and you paint with it. The value of the canvas will... Uh, will have an up value and that adds exponentially. And if you uh, collect that in an economy, okay, you don't need a factor endowment or resources. It's in the individual. Okay? So uh, on a meso level, lagay na muna natin sa, hindi ko lang kung meso level nga ang Baguio, pero ano ba ang creative cities for Baguio? So, uh, Baguio has been a creative city, pero ako kasi tagalabas ako. When I, when I, tagalos banyos po ako. So when I go to Baguio, on when, when I think about Baguio, I cannot think it as a creative city. Okay? So no offense. From a tourist perspective, pa pupunta ako doon, it's a cold city. So it is a city where, where I can buy vegetables. It's a city where I can uh, go to man-made attractions. When, when, where when I go to man-made attractions, sasabihin ko, ah, ito na yun. So, but then the efforts or the value of now having a creative cities is that we are seeing that or Baguio on a different level. Okay? So while doing si Lolo Ben, our class, and my interviews, ang daming artists. Okay? I don't know if you, uh, if you know that uh, there are many hubs of artists here. So, uh, and dun ko na po prove na Baguio is not just a tourist city, but it's actually a creative city. It can, it can be, or it can take charge of its name. Uh, pwede niyong panindigan yung pangalan. Okay? So what it is for a meso level, how can we promote it? With the efforts now of uh, UP Baguio and the other industries, currently, kaya meron tayong to, it's the Entacool. So, uh, and uh, part of the support is this talastasan. So, that's it. From a micro level, tingnan natin yung mga businesses. Okay? So, how can we have good products from creativity? Okay? So, uh, it, is a, it is creativity that we have, yung kaninang outputs nila on different uh, uh, support to the creative industries. Uh, how can we have now, or creativity is now the source of the products that we have now, such as Selectas, ano ba to? Uh, ube with salted egg na ice cream. Hindi ko lang kung nakita nyo na yun. Okay, so they thought out of the box. O kaya Jollibee's Ube Jampay. O kaya Jollibee's Halo Halo Sunday. So who would think na they can do these products without creativity? Okay. Uh, yung huli ko nakita would be to Ron Flavored Lip Balm. Uh, so hanapin nyo sa Facebook. Uh, uh, and for example, on, on the class level that we have, hindi ko alam ko sa inyong project yun, they are proposing to have Lengua Cookie Butter. So our attack to Oreo Cookie Butter, but a, uh, a Baguio sense. Okay, so on that level, may value ang creativity on a micro or enterprise level. And lastly, yung personal level. Okay, so I am a believer that creativity can be learned. Kaya nga tayo merong mga schools. Okay, and then everyone thinks that they are not creative. Okay, so almost everyone thinks that they are not creative. Okay, but then as we see it, creativity is the only skill which cannot be replaced by artificial intelligence. So, uh, and creativity is not only exclusive to the College of Arts. And, uh, 
arts and communication, sorry. So, creativity is in business, creativity is in math, creativity is in, is in, is in everywhere. And it's not about just aesthetics. Kasi baka sabihin natin creativity is just in aesthetics, kung maganda. It's about thinking out of the box. Kaya baka nakikita nyo kami, meron kami dito ng mga na, nakasuot ng kakaiba minsan. So those are exercises that we have in eat creatively or eat differently. Uh, see differently and dress differently, which enhances creativity. So siguro lastly, I started with uh, thinking outside the box. But then it's design thinking's perspective of how can we make the box bigger. So, so with our efforts, with uh, with the different contributions of on the personal, micro, meso, macro level. So how can we create opportunities for the country to have to take advantage of the creative industries for Baguio to to take advantage of creative cities, artists, creative products, and for us. Ano ba yung value added sa atin ng creativity? Or how, what can we give to others which is rooted from creativity? So, uh, yun lang. Siguro din, uh, nilaymanize ko lang or pinersonal level ko uh, on what, ano ba sa atin ang creative cities? Okay? So, ayun po. Salamat po. Ako yung magre-react sa, ako yung magre-react sa reaction ni Chief. Okay. Um, and uh, uh, tell you what, tell you what, uh, some of our students when we when we taught the course in new enterprise planning uh, submitted to us. Um, kung na, kung kung natatandaan yun pa, merong isang tao dito sa cordin ang tawag yun ay carrot man. Okay. Now, and I found out that uh, cordy uh, groups, cigarette groups abroad put together funds para sa papuntahin sa Europe, sa, sa, sa London, para sa mag-perform. Okay. Now, and then we found out, so we found out, so from that idea, kasi ganito, now, kung ang performing group mo ay university-based, wala kang problema sa marketing. Papuntahin, like, SLU has 25,000 students. Papuntahin ko lang ang dalawampung section of the 25, sold na yung, ano, sold na yung performance. Eh, SLU, UB, uh, ganyan. And then, uh, so walang, walang problema doon. Ang may problema, yung performing groups na hindi university-based. So the, our music, our, the, the people who did our, our music, ano, our, the, 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 the question on music, Sabi, sundan nyo hanggang doon sa bar yung mga nagpa-perform doon. Sundan nyo kung ano yung kinakanta nila. Sundan nyo kung sino yung Benguet Cowboy na sinasabi namin. So, and they, so, so they found out. So they, they traced these people, including Bobby Carantes, by the way. So, uh, and then sabi, ang sabi daw sa kanila, nung ini-interview na nila, itong mga, itong mga, uh, itong mga performers na to, ang sabi daw sa kanila, happy na kami, Happy na kami kung yung bar na aming kinakantahan ay papayagang kaming uh, kantahin yung aming original music. So, ano na yon? Konsuelo na namin yon. Ang, ang sa akin naman doon, bakit hanggang konsuelo lang? Ganyan. Alam ko naman, for example, that Bobby Re Records, si Bobby, Ma si, si Bobby Carantes, yung original music niya ay nire-record niya. Uh, uh, yung mga at Kung pupunta ako sa research, doon sa pinakaliblib, sa pinakaliblib na, na lugar dito sa Cordy, I am very surprised that in the markets there, ay merong mga original uh, CDs ng mga original composition in the different Cordillera languages sung by, uh, sung by, ano, sung by the, sung by their, you know, sung by these people who, who sing in these bars or who sing in this Kaya hindi ko na iniisnab yung mga bar-bar na yan eh. So I find out that here, the original music is there. The original performers are there. Ang pinanghihinayangan ko, ang pinanghihinayangan ko lang ganito. Uh, bakit ang market, bakit ang market ng kanilang CDs ay nandun sa napaka-localized? Napaka-localized, makikita mo sa palengke ng, sa palengke sa, sa buntok, makikita sa palengke ng, 
Parang ka anywhere. Pagka may festival sa Trinidad, biglang makikita mo doon na isang buong, isang buong stand alone na ano dyan, nandun yung iba't ibang ano, ang daming, ang dami nun. And what we are missing is actually, kaya yun yung proposal ng team. Kailangan natin ng platform para ito ay, para ito ay magkaroon ng market, hindi lang yung napaka-localized na market. Now, the other thing is this. Uh, and I, I will confess, no aming kabataan as faculty, <laughs> no aming kabataan as faculty, uh, buti na lang tenured na ako at retired, no? Nung, nung kabataan namin as faculty, gabi-gabi nandung kami sa fireplace. Right? Nasa fireplace kami. So it's, it's, uh, it's uh, country music, it's a country music pub. Andun kami ngayon. So yung mga kumakanta doon, nakaedad namin, kasabay na namin tumanda. Okay. But we found out na ang dami kasing organization, tinatawag lang Igorot Global, all over the world. So, at yung mga nandun na ngayon, sa iba't ibang lugar na yon, ay yung aming mga kaedad na nag-migrate na doon. Nagpapatak sila para maimbita nila yung contemporary nilang kumakanta noong 1980s sa, pra, sa ganyan, para pumunta sa States at mag-perform dito sa isang city. Pag nabalitaan, doon sa susunod na city, magpapatak din sila para mag-perform din doon. Ang mukha din ng mga, mga uh, ng ating mga ano, top, top performers dito ng pop music sina Sina Regine Velasquez, sina, sina, Sarah, sina Sarah Geronimo na pinagko-concert nila sa abroad. So ang, ang sa amin dito is that this is an untapped market. This is an untapped market for our local artists to explore. Yung, yung mga, yung mga ganong, yung mga ganong klase. Now, the other thing also that frustrates me is this. Uh, naglalakad ako sa naglalakad ako sa town, biglang may poster doon na magko-concert si Maymay. Ang una kong tanong, <laughs> ang una kong tanong, sino ba si Maymay? <laughs> sino ba si Maymay? At bakit siya nakakasingil ng ticket na nagkakahalaga ng 2,500? Doon sa mosh pit down ng UB Gym. I'm to my surprise, napupuno niya. Tapos the last one was what? Ray, 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 Ray ano siya na? James Raid and sino yung kanyang lab team? Ayun, magko-concert din daw sila na 2,500 din daw yung ticket. So that's what, ang, ang, ang frustration ko doon is ganito. Bakit pag Baguio Talent ang magpe-perform wala kaming, wala ka nang makuhang audience at hindi ka makakasingil. 50 pesos, 50 pesos na nga lang uutangin pa sa'yo. Sisingilin mo pa. Na tinanong, in-interview naman, in-interview nila siyempre yung, yung mag, ano, bakit ang ganun yung response? Sabi daw, e eh, tigabagyo lang naman sila eh. Yung ganun, yung, yung, guys, <laughs> we really, we, it, everything, I think begins with uh, our education uh, ng, mga, ng mga audience natin dito. Uh, the, other, the other thing about yung mga tiga, uh, yung mga tiga La Union na naka-organisa na nila yung kanilang creative hub, ang kanila naman daw, question sa isip nila is, uh, bakit pag nagpunta tayo sa Bangkok, bakit, nagpunta ta- bakit pag nagpunta tayo sa Southeast Asian cities, ay meron tayong napapanood, yung ganun, na, na yung sarili lang kultura. So you go, to, you go to a performance, you go to a performance in Bangkok, hindi, hindi, hindi Broadway, yung, hindi Broadway, hindi ano yan, ang nandun ay yung, uh, ay yung kanilang talagang, ano, yung, yung talagang kultura nila, sayaw nila, uh, 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 kanta nila, Siyempre, ano na yun? Theatr- theatricalized na yun. Edited na yun. Bakit sa Kota Kinabalu? Bakit sa Kutsing? Bakit sa, bakit sa Yogyakarta? Bak- ganon. 
Bakit sa Bali? Bali is a whole island where the selling point is the native culture. So yun yung yun yung ano eh, yun yung yun yung ibig ibig din naming ibig din naming sabihin. Ibig din naming itanong sa sarili namin. Kung kung bakit uh, kung bakit nagagawa ng ibang bayan yon and part of the and part of their creative economy without them knowing I think in fact what 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 is this what is this animal called uh, creative economy kasi parang bagong bagong buzzword na naman nun eh. but they have been doing this for for ages so yun yung ano so yun yung yung uh, yun yung uh, so, tapos sabi nila yung ang daming dance ang daming dance schools pala dito at ang daming music schools pala dito so halimbawa yung ano ang uh, ano yung musar pag sila ay nag recital limang araw limang araw kasi ganun kadami yung kanilang mga estudyante pero ang audience mo naman doon ay yung nanay yung tatay at yung barangay na ano nung 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 tutugtog doon so it's not i don't think it's at the point i don't think that is the point so for the for this for the for you young people yun yung yun yung uh, sana ang ang isang gusto namin buksan ang isip niyo sa sa ganung bagay it does not have to be my my yan it does not have to be James Reid. The St. Louis Glee Club is an award-winning performing group. And, uh, we are very surprised to find out that without any marketing, but nagugulat na lang kami na malalaman namin na itong tigabagyo na to, itong tigabagyo performing group na to ay nanalo sa Singapore, uh, nanalo, na, na, Ganun, uh, are declared to be international winners in different competitions. Our artists, uh, taon-taon meron sa ating mga visual artists na nasa 13 artists na pinipili ng CCP. So, ang, meron tayong mga artists dito na nanalo sa Biennale uh, sa ano, art competition sa Singapore and other places. So, hindi natin kailangan yung mga tiga Maynila <laughs> di na nila na tiga Maynila na babayata ng 2,500 para kantahin yung kanilang kaisa-isahang hit at magpakyut yung kanya wag nyo wag naman nating maliit eh. <laughs> yung yung sariling atin yun ang naman na kailangan nating buksan yung isip and if if somebody if we are able to do that I think we are successful in in doing it Thank you very much, uh, Professor Tapang. So, meron po ba? Yes po. Sorry, it's not informal yung suit. <laughs> so, uh, I'm Mar Maui Fernando. I'm the Artistic Director for the Alab Dance Company. We are a community youth organization. We have toured Malaysia na. <laughs> okay. Tapos we'll, we'll be touring the Asia and Europe hopefully next year. So, para may positive naman kayo marinig. <laughs> <laughs> um, medyo underground lang kami kasi parang what's the point <laughs> kung hingi kami ng support sa government kasi ilang beses na akong binaril ng gobyerno <laughs> sa bad dating sa budget. Binigyan ako ng 100 pesos nung magre-represent kami sa Hawaii. Oh. So, 100 pesos. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm also the creative director for When in Baguio. So, we're trying to digitize, to do a digital platform for performing arts. Sa next year, it's gonna be a series of monthly events na sa mga creative spaces. Sana payagan ako ni Chansey sa Teatro Amianan. <laughs> So my question is, na I've, since I've been managing artists and youth artists for like five years already, uh, we have an experience of schools cr killing creativity. I think that's, yeah, schools cr killing creativity. Okay. 
Yes. <laughs> for example, for high schools and elementary, pag nagpa-practice sila, ang binibigay nila, for example, when they ask us to train their students, gumagawa sila ng environment na you should be training your craft pag may competition or performance lang. That's one. Yung budget also, pag local nga, natry ko na rin yun, <laughs> sobra. <laughs> Sir, pwedeng pakain lang. <laughs> Diyos ko po. <laughs> so, uh, tapos kapag may mga from Manila na ano, mas, mal mas malayong malayo yung kaya nilang ibigay na money. And lastly is, may mga students ako from certain universities, uh, since hindi kami official uh, part ng, uh, hindi kami official youth, uh, school organization, an excuse sila kahit nirepresent nilang Philippines for an international festival, they conducted a workshop sa mga communities outside the Philippines. So, parang yung mga bata, like, 50 to 60 percent ng students, artists ko, hindi to magal dahil sa ganong environment sa school pa lang. Iba pa yung sa bahay. <laughs> Mas malala sa bahay. <laughs> Anak, ano mapapalahan mo dyan sa pagsasayaw? <laughs> ano yung mga artist, nag a lang yan. Okay. <laughs> Tsaka, sorry, maraming artist na mukhang addict daw. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> may tinamaan po. <laughs> I don't mean. <laughs> uh, yun lang. So, hopefully, this creative economy and what you're doing is we're hoping na it could change something in terms of the environment. Uh, hopefully, it could be a nurturing environment for especially young artists to thrive and discover the opportunities for the creative industry. Kasi meron naman. Meron naman. Ayun. Hopefully you could help. <laughs> Thank you. Hello. Hello. Um, um, uh, malaki talaga trabaho to eh. <laughs> malaki, tin, malaki talagang trabaho to. Ang, uh, uh, ang hirap, ang hirap sabihin nito, no? Pero yung yung kasing pagka pagka yung government agency yung nag nag ano dito ang nag pick up nito laging top down kasi eh so hindi nanggagaling hindi nanggagaling sa baba na kinakailangan natin iangat ang ang uh, ang ating respeto sa kultura ang top top down top down kasi eh tapos may budget dahil yun ng buzzword ngayon at ang karaniwan, gusto nila within the year, may, pay, may, may pay payback ka agad. So, kaya sabi ko, mahabang lakbay nito, kasi ang una man papalitan yung mindset. You have to change your mindset, including the mindset of, 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 of parents. Uh, uh, kung anong naranasan mo, ng kabataan mo, ayun din ang naranasan ko, ng kabataan ko, sa aking parents. Yung ganyan. Kasi dumating, kasi nga, We need day jobs, di ba? We need day jobs to indulge our <laughs> to, to indulge our interest in the arts. Tayo nga nan. So, uh, dumating yung panahon nga na malapit na rin ako itakwil ng magulang ko kasi hindi ako nakikita sa bahay. So, because I was part of the performing groups na nasa Manila and we are in Bulacan, we were in Bulacan, hindi nila ako nakikita. So, sabi niya malapit na ako itakwil. Uh, sa pamilya ko, yung ganyan. So yun yung simula talaga sa, simula talaga sa, sa mindset yan eh. But, uh, ang, 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 <laughs> di ba naman, ang consolation na lang natin yan eh, kung sa dalawang pumong estudyante, uh, mayroong apat o lima, na, ano yun, na, na, nandyan, happy ka na doon. Talagang, papalitan mo talaga yung, papalitan mo talaga yung, mindset na ganito. But, the Chancellor promised. <laughs> But the Chancellor is saying that uh, UP Baguio welcomes, uh, welcomes reforming groups because he says this is going to be Baguio's cultural hub. So, his campus, ang chance siya, 
<laughs> but the, he intends the campus to be actually uh, a cultural hub, a a place for the performing arts and uh, for for all all types of arts. So hindi na lang hindi na lang yung aming ano hindi lang yung aming performing groups ang may uh, access sa kanyang venue. Okay. So simula mo talaga sa ganun eh. Yes. Um, two insights lang, uh, possibly suggestions. First is, I think creative economy, as it's being discussed, is one of those areas na bumabalik tayo dun sa one is to one, hindi one is to many. It's becoming more personalized. Um, people get their art from apps. <coughs> you buy individually created, curated stuff online. You have eBay, you have Etsy. It's a changing economic model. But I think what is missing for Baguio is that we don't have the platform. So I agree. The platform is most important. And the hard economics of the platform matters. Kaya ang ganda nung jive ng lecture na to because you are creative, but you have to understand that the economics of creativity is changing. So shared economy will become one of the platforms for creative artists like you. Pero you have to study the platform and the economics of it. One is to one. Ulit. Parang Airbnb, Uber. Diba? You don't hire a fleet of cars anymore. You do one-to-one -one with the driver. You can review if the driver, you like it. Right? So the second insight would be, this is only possible if there's an enabling environment. So that's governance. So we go back to, if, if Baguio as a city, wants to decide that it wants to be a creative hub, and UP Baguio wants to decide to be the hub of the creative hub, then the what are the performance measures you expect from your leaders that will enable you to build the platforms that matter to you as artists? Diba? What are the spaces? What are the opportunities? What are What's the environment? Uh, what's the kind of governance that you need? And then... UP Baguio, not only in the creative side of it, but the governance side of it, the economic side of it, can then engage the city on behalf of the artist. So ako actually na-excite ako sobra sa, <laughs> sa, sa lecture, and it does open a lot of possibilities for many of us who are working on governance, creative arts, economy, and stuff like that. Thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I was just thinking, uh, sa akin kasi, the less reliance we have on the state, the better eh. So, but habang hindi pa tayo pwedeng uh, give up our day jobs, so we do, so, so that we can do what we want to do and get paid for it. So, hindi ko, hindi ko alam kung gano na natin katindi na explore, to explore yung corporate social responsibility ng mga private, private companies uh, para para doon manggaling yung ano yung assistance. Hindi ko alam kung papan kung hindi ko alam how how we are able to hindi ko pa naaral yun eh. Paano ba explore yung paano ba natin pwedeng explore yung corporate social responsibility budget ng mga companies. Now, uh, kasi I remember that Insular Life, Insular Life Insurance Company uh wala pa yung creative creative city na yun. for for a long long time yung repertory philippines ang ginagamit nilang rehearsal rehearsal space at ang ginagamit nilang performance venue ay yung maliit na theater ng insular life sa makati so bago sila nakapagtayo bago sila nakapagtayo ng kanilang teatro for ages and ages uh, insular life allowed repertory philippines to use the facilities of the uh, of the uh, of insular life in Makati. So among uh, hindi ako tiga rep, hindi, hindi ako tiga rep. Pero yung aming malit na ano don, yung aming malit na, na na theater group no, pinapayagan din kami. Eh. So basta hindi season ng hindi season ng rep na hindi kami makakag makakano sa anila. We're also allowed to use it. And, and since we were coming from a theater of poverty, okay, pagdating namin do sa kanilang technical room yung yung sa lights yung nakita na namin yung ano 
yung 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 panel nila ng 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 switches sa lights. Ang una naming reaction, ano ba 'yan? <laughs> Paano ba natin gagawin? Para ba natin gagamitin 'yan? Kasi yung Tether of Poverty din namin noon, ang nag na, we we were we were we were performing in love sa lobby, sa lobby lang. May dalawang silya doon at may isang silya dito at meron kaming yung photog, yung yung sa photographers na ilaw yung ginagamit sa stu, photography studio. Nakatali lang sa dalawang silya, andiyan lang kami. Yun na yun. So, yun nga, I I I would I would uh, like to do that and explore ano yung possibilities if we can tap uh, the funds ng uh, private private enterprises. Yung tipong give back naman kayo, ano ba? Ang ganyan. Uh, kami naman ng, sa amin naman gagaling ang tubo nyo, bigyan nyo naman kayo, balik naman nyo sa amin yung konti, supportahan naman ninyo yung ano, supportahan naman ninyo yung mga, uh, yung mga creative artists sa ano, sa bayan natin. Ang ganyan naman. So, I don't know, I don't know how to court them, uh, but I, I think nandun yung mga ano eh, may, may pondo yun eh. Saan si pa-answer pa lang ng isa? Okay. So, re uh, response pro for sir. Okay. So, I, uh, I would just like to say na I empathize with him. Okay. In behalf, because all, uh, it's not only the, the group that is experiencing almost every artist. And it's not only excuse exclusive in Baguio. It's exclusive as a lifestyle towards almost everyone here. So, sabi ko nga dati, I wanted to have a Philippines na nakikita nila na career, uh, for example, ballet dancing. Hindi lang siya hobby, hindi lang siya side job. Okay. So, siguro, ang ilalagay ko lang on a sense para dito sa the students that we have. Because I think uh, training them in an educational system that values arts, music, as not just a side, uh, parang, parang sidestep lang sa school. For example, iba ang mapin natin, hinati pa sa apat o tatlo. So na, that, that is equally va uh, valuable as our arts and sciences. Kasi when we start our educational system, sideline na lang siya eh. So ang talagang ano natin, art science. Okay, so... And then next is for us students or consumers, because of that system, I think we also have less valuation towards the creative jobs or creative tasks that we have. Kunyari na lang, sasabihin yung pa-design naman, tapos hindi naman babayaran. Tapos kung babayaran naman, tatawaran pa, kukomentan pa yung ano mo na, uh, lalaitin ka pa doon sa artwork mo. Sabi, nagpag-design ka na nga lang, tapos sasabihin mo, uh, use your own creativity, tapos pagpasok ng ano, ah, ch -ch 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 -ch. So, hindi din enabling environment. Saka even, siguro reflection na rin sa atin yon na meron tayo ang tingin na baka kaya nating makuha sa, okay? So, mataas ang regard natin sa artworks. Pero, once na may papadesign tayo, medyo, baka, ay, Pwede bang free na lang? Pwede bang thank you na lang? Lilibre na lang kitang Jollibee. No, C3, ganun. So, uh, yun lang. Kasi I think it's in, uh, instilled sa also in the educational system. Kaya din hindi natin nababalue afterwards yung, hindi natin nakita yung value of arts and uh, the creative industries. Yeah. Yun lang po. Nancy, ikaw na. Ah, gusto ko lang sabihin na marami sa, sa, sa minumungkahin nyo kanina ginagawa na no at sinisimulan ng gawin no um, yung participation ng private sector we've been engaging of course i cannot announce publicly baka sinilin ako ng UP <laughs> mass communications tv <laughs> is being covered live so uh, i cannot divulge publicly who are the private uh, um, sector contributing to this no uh, this initiative pero malalaking companies na to hindi pera ang binibigay nila sa ngayon pero uh, mga non cash no uh, um, contribution like use of facilities uh, accommodation of guests in hotels uh, advertisements from Tiplex to Baguio uh, you've seen some of them but there will be more coming up uh, soon uh, things like those kasi if you put value in this marketing 
marketing value, you know, uh, you know uh, costs a lot, no? So, but uh, if that part of um, social marketing is taken care of by, by the private sector, then then that that's you know uh, that's huge already. Um, about governance, um, let me tell you, being one of the actors, you know, of this great created this uh, city declaration. Um, what was in our minds? What was our agenda, really? No, so, ito na aking uh, great reveal, no? Bakit natin ginagawa ito? Um, it's really a, a strategy, no? Uh, we know that um, we've been creative, but we can be better. Um, we can do much more uh, in terms of what our um, friends no, in the past had done, like the Baguio Arts Guild, yung mga initiatives na mga, mga tao bago tayo. We have seen the, the glory days, the golden age of culture in, in Baguio. And in fact, that was what, that one of those that made us no, uh, a creative city, the past. No? Uh, now, looking into the future, this declaration is really an aspiration for the city that we want. Okay. Um, we, ca we came from a, so a social movement, the Baguio we want, I shared that one. We raised a lot of issues about Baguio uh, becoming uh, really worse and worse. Uh, and we felt that we were not listened to. We, it, it parang we always felt that we were always parang considered on the other side of the fence and not really uh, meeting halfway. So when the Creative City Initiative uh, came up no, as, an, as an opportunity, we thought, Baka naman dito pwede pag-usap, mas maganda kasi baka opportunity na ito na talagang to sit down the local government and other stakeholders and talk about uh, how we can cooperate and not always on necessarily on the other side of the fence no, or other side of the table. And of course, what will be declared will be the city. No? It's, it's a glory that will be given to the city government. So we worked hard for it. It's really a civic society initiative, this, this UNESCO declaration. In partnership, of course, with government institutions like BOT CAR, no? Of course, UP was uh, one of the lead institutions, together with DTI, uh, people in local government unit, no? Um, department heads of LGU. Collaborative, yeah, and the artist group, no? Uh, at that time, they were not yet organized. So we organized them be because of this, they got organized, the Bashi, the Baguio Arts and um, Creative um, Arts and Crafts Collective Incorporated, which is also an emerging group, again, as a result of the Creative City Declaration. Well, all I'm saying is that this is a process of becoming, not yet of being a creative city, really. Uh, we are a creative city in the crafts and folk arts, and we deserve that. There's basis for that, otherwise UNESCO Considering the, the rigorous process that UNESCO uh, uh, goes through when declared, declaring a city a heritage site or city, talagang ano yan, a rigorous. Uh, mind you, we were there were ten cities that applied last year. Cities like Cebu, Angeles, Manila, uh, Quezon City, and uh, all the others. Baguio, Baguio was one. Uh, Quezon City for film, Manila for um, design, I think, no. Quezon uh, Cebu for design, Angeles for gastronomy, Baguio for crafts and folk arts. But all out of the 10 applications, only Baguio was chosen. The documents were not returned to us. Why? Because I think we deserved it. No History, the, 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 the creative cities, Ililika, and then naman eh, meron talagang elements. Ang kulang yung pagtatahi nito, yung paghahabi, no? Uh, and pag, pag consolidate at the level of the city. Kasi sa ngayon, kanya-kanya. Or in the past, at least, kanya-kanya. Pero dahil dito sa declaration natin, nag-uusap-usap oli lahat. Ang mga artists ay nag-uusap-usap. Nakikipag-usap tayo sa private sector at sa sa gobyerno. So ang panawagan ko bilang uh, isa sa mga uh, actor at leading ano dito is, let us help. No? Hindi na dapat sana, kundi gawin na. Okay? Kasi there's, me, there's, there's uh, so much you can do, even as an individual. Sabi nga ni Ben Hor kahapon, Ben Hor Villanueva, ang galing ng sinabi niya, huwag na kayo usap-usap na usap. 
at uh, diskusyon ng diskusyon. Gawin nyo na. Kaya nga creative eh. Create and act, sabi niya. Yan si, Bren, si Ben Hor, sabi niya. Chan, si Lord. Um, I think that would be a, uh, unless may meron pa pong pahabol po. Sige po, uh, one more, please. Thank you. Mukhang napunta yung mga creative mag-question sa likod. Anyway, I don't, I just hope na hindi ako sana ang last. I am Clint, I am a former member of the Baguio Artist Guild. <laughs> I've also some managed some groups also. But eventually, I, for economic reasons, I got into urban farming. But to make it creative, I got, I made this urban farm. I set up in such a way that I get to promote art. Pero that's who I am now. Uh, please allow me to connect kay sir kanina. He mentioned some people in his past days, in our past days. There's a lot of artists. In fact, I've... I've managed some of them also in the past and did some animation projects and film projects with them. This is what happened before during the time and still happening now. Na sinabi ni Sir kanina, let's act. Look at this in this perspective. Kaming mga artists na native, na igurot, ang mga friends namin, native rin. Kaya ang purchasing power namin, native rin. Now, let's look at this different perspective. This is the part where you young students can help us. You have the power of technology in your hands. You have the time to make blogs, to make viral video. Karutman made it because of the viral video and viral photo. That's the thing that you can do. Now, sa perspective naman ng akadim, na sinabi ni Sir kanina, that education is actually killing creativity. I know that because I'm an educator also as well. What if the teachers of economics give a challenge to the students to make a viral video of a certain group, a challenge where they get to identify a certain group, a creative that has economic potential and make it their case study where they make a blog, they make a video, they approach these people and get to know them. You may not be natives of, the place, of this place, but you get to open yourself up. Kasi kami mga native, we can market ourselves to social media. Unfortunately, our friends are only our fellow natives. Eh. What if you guys, na hindi necessary taga rito, but have the heart of, of Baguio, get to interview a local group, get to know them by heart, get to immerse yourself with their culture, and make a write-up, a blog, or create a group within your school wherein your friends are not locally native. It's a different segment that we cannot reach. We cannot just uh, add an ordinary friend or make them a subscriber of our video. That's because they may not be, you know, hindi sila masyadong aware or hindi sila naiingan nyo sa presentation ng mga natives. Pero pag kayo mismo na hindi native, e eh gagawa ka ng kwento na that makes it so unique and so enticing na gusto nila mapanood ang isang klaseng sayaw in a more creative way or just one way na parang makatulong tayo sa kanila para makapunta sila sa overseas like our guy he has contributed I basically own metrobagi.com alam niyo kung bakit dating ginagawa ko yung ginagawa niya eh. pero ang hina magbenta ng ticket alam niyo bakit followers ko local siya eh. hindi yung mga may pera na pwede nilang gastusin out of curiosity eh mga local ka alam na nila ang sayaw namin eh they can even dance what gives them a reason to go and visit what's new? It's you guys. It's your relatives, it's your friends from the overseas, from, from Manila. Aakit ng bagyo to experience what we have new. Kaya ang ginawa ko ngayon, nagpost na lang ako ng workshops, trainings for free para hindi ka gutumin. So ang pinost ko sa metrobagyo.com, mga trainings na libre. Kasi walang gugutumin. Kasi pag nag ka, libre rin pagkain mo. May laman pang utak. Pero ito yung frustration ko nun eh. This is what I would like to put sa metrobagyo.com. Mga events to promote creativity. Unfortunately, nag-test kami. Wala talaga. I think it's my subscriber, followers. Doon ako nagpa-flap. Doon kami nagpa-flap na nag-study kami. So I, I, I connect with sir. Doon sa sinasabi nyo during your early... Kuminsan, yun ang limits namin eh. And the technology yung sinabi ni sir na nandito na kayo. This is something that you can contribute to the educators also. Why don't you give your students outside the box ba? 
You challenge them something about economics and don't make them memorize about economics. But you let them apply economics on their own respective specialized area. And at the end of the day, they can say it's their accomplishment and achievement. At the end of the day, baka wal, hindi mo na papakailaman yung grade mo eh. After all, kung makaga-apply ka ng trabaho, hindi mo na ikukwento ka nung grade mo sa particular subject eh. It's about, they will be asking on the third stage of interview, tell me something about yourself. And that is where you can express your experience in life, what you have accomplished and delivered, especially yung mga civic-oriented, related na. At the end of the day, it's something na masasabi mo, sarili mo lang yan. It all started with a simple photograph of Carotman. Barkada ako yung manager ni Carotman, kaya medyo napatay ako. Kaya alam ko yung kwento. So, when they asked me kung anong next na festival na magandang gawin, nagkwentoan kami, Abs Festival, kasi maraming naglalikes dyan. Remember, nung last na panagbenga, mas nag-hit, mas nag-viral yung mga nagpa-picture na may abs. Sabi ko, kahit yung mga malalaki ang chan, pentalpen lang katapat niyan, magbabiral pa yan. So, yun, itong trend ngayon eh. We don't basically watch TV now. We'll rather watch YouTube kasi we can choose. We don't want to be bombarded with advertisements. You know, yung changes natin eh. That's something that even our teachers may not have noticed. But ours, we have all cell phones. We can just tag and share. But something you can contribute. So ang challenge ko sa, sa UP is, actually, I'm not from UP, pero parang gustong gusto kong kasalamuhay mga taga UP. I'm a graduate of SU back in 1995. So, kaya nandito ako, out of the blues, kung ano kayong mangyari, sabi ko. Pero, naiintrig ako sa klase ng pag-iisip ng mga taga UP eh. You don't have a box around you. Kumbaga, I just hope that, that your teachers can encourage you to contribute more by using your tools, your network, your subscribers, your followers. You know, doing something crazy will create a lot of steer. A lot of steers. So, I, I think, yung minention ni Sir kanina, you can do a lot of things. You can start with your cell phone. Take a video. In fact, what we did, dun sa baba, sa Session Road, yung nagre-raise ng pondo na kumakanta sa Session Road. Aksidente, hindi ko nga alam sila eh. Nagkaupo lang kami sa pasakal, yun, nagkwentuhan kami, sabi ko, why don't I make a video like this? Pero hindi ko sinabi na filmmaker ako. Why don't you make a video like this? And then post it at the end of the video. I-post niya yung raising fund for this. Baka mas marami pang makuha kaysa yung nakatayo kayo dyan. Kasi at least control niya yung email. Hindi kayo lulokay ng iba na ibibideo kayo tapos nagre-raise ng pondo. Hindi pala nabibigay yung pondo yan sa nangangailangan. Why don't you make your own? So, na-create yung idea. Yun nga lang, the question that I'm going to leave here is, will you be, be able to come out with a team of bloggers, viral videographers, para at the end of the day, kahit sino mga may organization or groups or advocacy or ideas or creative idea na walang kapondo-pondo o walang kakonek-koneksyon sa gobyerno, e eh, pwedeng lalapit sa UP. This is my idea. Ipipitch in niya lang. And then when you guys likes it, then you go work for it for fun. At the end of the day, that's your portfolio when you apply for a job. I used to work with HR. Yan palagi nakikita ko na gustong gusto ko. Ini-employ namin yung mga taong may ganun na sense of accomplishment. Hindi yung mataas ang grade. That's the realities of life. And when we look at them, we don't look at the resume. We look at their Facebook kung anong pinupost nilang matitino. And that gives us a reason that these are potential people, potential game changer. So thank you for allowing me to share. Thank you very much. Sige, sir. Uh, very quick. Plug ko lang. Uh, I have a database of local artists and performers. <laughs> so you could connect with me kung gusto nyo. And I have 93,000 followers on Facebook. So you could, if you have videos or stories, I could share it on my platform. Sir, maybe we can have the, what, what's the name of the, what do they look for? When in Baguio. When in Baguio, yes. Uh, it doesn't have to be UP, Clint. Ano. Um, uh, that's why we're engaging other stakeholders like uh, the Baguio, uh, the, ba the, ba the city government as the main, uh, the, the lead, one of the lead actors here. Well, we have already launched the Creative Baguio website. No? It's being managed by the tourism office of uh, Baguio City under engineer Alec Mapalo. So, uh, hindi ko kabisado yung, ano, yung address, pero creative... Okay. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. We will improve the, yeah, we'll, we'll tell the managers to improve it. Uh, thank, you, thank you for the feedback. Very recent lang ito. But the one of the objectives is um, something uh, similar to what you're talking about, like promoting our artists. Um, parang uh, it will be a a a, tawag dito? a platform for uh, promoting no? uh, artists, crafts, and um, other uh, creative uh, products no? of Baguio City. Um, kausapin ilang to mga bata na to. Ito mga bata. Okay. Um, uh, uh, a couple, two years, three years ago, the movie The Martian. Okay. What's on? You, uh, I don't know if you remember it or if you're old enough to have seen the movie The Martian. Na. Alam niyo yung, alam niyo yung The Martian. Yung, yung, uh, story anon was a blog. Uh, Andrew Weir, uh, uh, ano yun eh, nagsimula sa blog. He blogged what his idea is and he, ni hindi isang, ano yun eh, yung chapter by chapter by chapter sa separate, separate uh, times yung pag-issue nyo ng blog. And the blog became viral to the point where the studio, the main mainstream studio, got interested because of the number of people who were uh, who were reading the blog and who were liking it. And got to the point na to the point na yung yung nagsusulat ng blog ay uh, binili na sa kanya o binenta na niya yung rights dun sa kanyang blog, and he was calling it the Martian. And in fact, ang nangyari don hindi lang isang is, nung 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 meron ng nung meron na siyang agent at uh, at uh, meron ng bidding intact doon sa kwento niya after the blog naging print yung yung kwento ng The Martian and then after he got an agent uh, binid na yon inoction na yon uh, naglaban-laban pa nga yung major studio until the major studio uh, became interested Binenta nila, uh, binili nila yon, and I decided that is, this can be a uh, this can be a major motion picture, and so uh, uh, it was so they asked an A-listed actor, uh, Matt Damon, to to appear in it. Kaya nung ano? Kaya nung uh, kaya nung Oscar nung taon na yon, uh, the, the author of the blog that became a book, that became a screenplay, that became a movie was nominated for nominated for best screenplay and the actor was also nominated for best actor so uh ang ibig namin sabihin yung sinasabi ni Dene Chip nagsisimula sa inyo as an individual and you guys are are more comfortable than us in working uh in in using this, this technology so wag yung wag niyo wag niyo malimi Wag niyong maliitin ang sarili niyo na ang idea ninyo ay baka walang baka walang ano, baka walang mag mag-like. So, may mga ganun eh, may mga may mga ganung simula lang. Vlogs lang 'yon until it has become a mo, uh, it has become a major motion picture. So, ang daming ano, the 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 internet and the uh, and the apps and all these platforms, guys are yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think uh, this is a good end for the challenge that uh, Sir Ben and the others have posed, especially to the younger people. You are uh, comms, no? You are uh, lit students, language ball students. Okay. I think the question, the, the challenge has been posed. Go local. Start with yourselves. Diba? What can you do to promote the local? Hindi na yung mga puro imported, hindi mga puro western lang, okay? So, uh, marami pong salamat for being here. Can we please, um, we have a certificate of appreciation to be given to Sir Ben. Is chance, no more, okay. So, si, uh, si Professor Pitlongay, can we please uh, call you on the stage? The College of Arts and Communication of UP Baguio presents the certificate of appreciation to Mr. Benvenido Tapang for his active and invaluable participation as resource person during the Telestasan Lecture Art and Creativity Conversation Series held on November 13 at the Teatro Amyanan. College of Arts and Communication, Baguio City, 
given this 13th day of November at UP Baguio. Maraming maraming salamat po. Palakapakan po natin si Sir Ben. May picture ba? <laughs> si Kuya Marvin na daw magpipicture din. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Oh, isa pa daw. Picture pa daw. Sama, hindi kayo na lang po. We thank everyone for coming, our guests, our um, students were here. I hope that this was not just you know something to listen to, but the challenge was posed, and I hope that you really act on it. Thank you very much po, and uh, magandang araw po. May merienda po sa labas. Uh, habang pinag-iisipan nyo daw yung mga creative outputs na gagawin ninyo, may pagkain sa labas, salamat po.